Butler Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954 717 7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Welcome, my Florida neighbors, and look what's happening. I hope you're all getting your COVID shots and you're all up to date, especially you seniors. Make sure you get your shots, please, and make sure you do the social distancing and still wear your mask. Tonight, we have a great show. We have a great young doctor, Dr. Menezahoff, Zena Menezahoff. He's with the Boca Raton Orthopedic Group. Doc's with me right here. I'm going to let him tell you. Doc, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you went to school. What's your type of practice? You have a very unique practice. This is a young doctor that doesn't that doesn't believe in it, but he really tries to avoid surgery as much as he possibly can. Most of his stuff is all therapeutic. Doc, why don't you take over and tell us a little bit about what you do and how you do it. Sure. Thanks for having me on, the, on your show tonight. Uh, so I'm an osteopathic physician. I started uh, my training, my medical school training in New York, went to New York College of Osteopathic Medicine, uh, graduated in 2010. Afterwards, I continued to do a, a residency in physical medicine rehabilitation. Most people haven't heard of that, known as also known as a physiatrist. Um, basically, we focus on healing people, getting them back to their uh, life standards. And my focus throughout residency was trying to help people in, in pain. Um, I worked at the VA uh, for about a year and a half and treated a lot of the veterans. Um, most of them did have chronic pain, you know, anywhere in the spine, low back, uh, hips, knees. Um, I also treated migraines uh, with Botox. And also throughout my residency, we did focus on interventional uh, pain care, which included um, injections into the spine. Um, I continued that with a year of fellowship down in uh, Nova Southeastern. And um, that was more focused on a spinal interventional care, which included uh, epidurals, facet injections, kyphoplasties, uh, radiofrequency ablations, um, and much more than that. Well, a lot of people know about uh, the epidural and stuff. I had a couple of myself. What's chiroplasty? What is that, basically? Kyphoplasty is basically putting, if there's a compression fracture, in the lumbar spine, mostly lumbar and thoracic. Uh, basically, there it's a fracture in the vertebra, and that could cause pain. We, you know, it's diagnosed on X-ray and MRI, and if it's painful, we put put some cement in there through a small cannula. Now, the, this practice practice that you're practicing right now, which is basically we just said physiatry. A lot of people don't know what physiatry is. No. Uh, physiatrists now, I understand, they usually deal with elderly patients, don't they? Pay medication, it's, it's sort of... I, so I, it's, I, it's a big spectrum of the types of people we treat. You know, a lot of it could be in, inpatient. Inpatient care is basically patients who are post-operatively uh, being treated for, you know, hip and knee placements, also treat uh, traumatic uh, brain injuries, spinal cord injuries. In an acute setting, is a little bit different than outpatient setting. So in an acute inpatient setting, patients are coming in usually post-trauma. Um, so a lot of my residency was dedicated to that. I treated uh, you know, a lot of hip and knee placements uh, post-op coming into the facility, you know, trying to get them back on their feet. Uh, you know, they're usually very weak, so we worked on that. Um, then we have a lot of spinal cord injury patients. Uh, you know, they come in with weakness. Uh, we try to help them rehab them to get, again, back on their feet. And as an outpatient, a lot of that is, you know, as a physiatry outpatient physician, you are more looking into uh, pain management aspect. Um, you know, again, trying to get the patients not go onto the surgery table. You know, focus on um, physical, th a lot of what I do is focus on physical therapy. I almost recommend 80 to 90% of my patients to physical therapy so they can get better using their own uh, using their own body uh, strength. 
You know, we had a, uh, there was a hospital, I, I think it's in Del Rey. That's a post-acute hospital, I think it is. Pinecrest? Sure, yes. You familiar with Pinecrest? Sure. Now, Pinecrest, and one of the, I'm sure you take care of a lot of stroke victims too, correct? Exactly. Stroke victims? Exactly. Between stroke and those, those people that are quadriplegic, paraplegics. Correct. Today, which is a major problem, they're always in pain. Right. So some of the things what you do is you basically, without surgery, because it's either post-operative, you're going in there after the surgery is done and trying to, let's say, try to hit the home run and get them better. Exactly. Okay. Now, with the opioid, a lot of people get hooked on opioids. You know, right. with this oxycotton. Right. I remember having a guy, a gentleman working for me. He had back pain, and he started with oxycotton. Right. And before you know it, he lost his family, he lost everything, he got hooked with these opioids. So you're not pushing that type of medication, am I correct? Very few, I mean, very limited patients receive opiates on a long term basis. If someone is coming in with a acute injury and he or she is in severe pain at the point, I do give them a few days supply. But nobody, unless you're in severe pain due to a chronic issue, then you're not getting much opioids from me. What he said, you're not going to go there as a pill factory and say, give me a prescription for 100 pills. He's not doing that. He's a typical physician that says, I'm going to heal you the way I think I should be healed. Am I correct? Sure. And you're not going to dictate to him what you need for opioids. No. So some of the other things you do, you went to uh, osteopathic medicine in this PMI residency in Stony Brook. Is that correct? Look, physical medicine rehabilitation. Physical medicine. Physical medicine is what? What is physical med- medicine? I mean, physical medicine basically means uh, trying to you know, work on the patient as a whole unit and not you know, so using, you know, focusing on musculoskeletal medicine. Okay, so it's basically the patient's trying to heal themselves. Correct. It, it, it can be mental, physical, sure, sure. some it can be psychosomatic injuries, correct? Sure. So you're looking into the whole patient's needs and whatever he needs to be done. Exactly. Well, let me ask another question. You're working with a number of physicians who I happen to know with both the orthopedic group, and if you find that the patient needs something more, you can always refer them out, correct? Yeah, I mean, I worked with a fantastic group of doctors. Um, we have all types of surgeons in our um, facility, so we have hip and knee specialists, um, two ankle special, two, you know, ankle foot and ankle orthopedic surgeons, hand specialist, hand also. specialist, uh, highly trained doctors. Uh, I think a couple of them are IV grads. Uh, so I mean, a lot of the patients, I would say ninety percent of our patients do not end up in surgery. So what he's working with, he's got a. He, when I was talking to the other physicians, they told me they were going to bring in doctor. It sort of rounds off their whole practice. He's the individual that says, okay, you're going to get a surgery. I'm going to follow you up after the surgery. Correct. I'm going to make sure that you get your rehab done properly. I'm going to make, which is very important. I know I'm suffering from two knee, two basic, I guess, meniscus tears. And I asked the doctor what, what can be done. And, you know, there's a number of things you can do even with meniscus tears or with knee, knee surgery with rehabilitation. So he pushes rehabilitation. He doesn't put so much surgery. If surgery has to be required, he'll refer you to the right person. I'm sure. Won't you, Doc? Sure. I mean, I also do a lot of interventional care for the spine um, before, you know, in conjunction with, with physical therapy. So if somebody comes in with this herniation in the neck, so some disc herniations cause pain just in the neck, and some disc herniations will cause pain uh, with going pressing on a nerve root going down the arm. Uh, so a lot of patients will come in, and you know, we'll start them off with uh, some physical therapy um, and some oral medication. I'll start them off with uh, anti-inflammatory muscle relaxants in conjunction with physical therapy and see, you know, give them a couple of weeks. If that doesn't work, you know, I'll bring them back in have it do an MRI and see the extent of, you know, the disc herniation. A lot of them, you know, they get better with one or two epidural injections. If that doesn't get better, you know, tell them go on for physical therapy a couple more months. And if that doesn't get better eventually and they're in severe pain, uh, I do refer them to Dr. Munoz, our uh, spine surgeon, and they could discuss further evaluation, possible surgery. Now, I, I, I play golf, and a lot of my friends who play golf, I just refer to a gentleman, he ended up with a sacroiliac pain right. that he couldn't get rid of, and it was very painful. Now, do you treat the sacroiliac? Sure, too? sure. 
That's a common. It's very underdiagnosed. I'd say one of the most underdiagnosed pain uh, symptoms that I see. Um, so because a lot of the pain just mimics sciatica. So patient patient comes in, the whole thing is sciatica. But after exam, I tell them no, it's not really it's not really sciatica. It's really a pain coming from your outside of your pelvis bones, sacroiliac joint. And it's pretty easy to treat, usually one or two injections, and they're usually doing much better. So sometimes if it does, doesn't get better, I could also do a radiofrequency ablation. Um, that basically blocks the nerves, innervating the joint uh, in a long, much longer term. The, uh, the procedure is done where you come onto the, you know, on our floral suite, we lay you on the bed. Most, it seems like simil similar to most other injections, but this time we do desynthesize the nerve endings with a heating probe. Mm -hmm. And that could last you much longer than uh, a general, you know, quarter, quarter, corticosteroid injection. That's almost like cauterizing it. Cauterizing, exactly. Cauter, right? Just like if you have a nosebleed, they cauterize your nose. Exactly. Right? So that's what he does. So as you can see, most of his what he's doing right now is all what I call uh, medicine that heals yourself. He's he's working with you, so you don't have to go through that painful surgery that you don't want to go through, and that's everybody tries to avoid surgery. I'm sure. So he's the guy that you want to go see when you have a hip. What's a hip pointer? I just talking to a gentleman now. He said he had a hip pointer. I think a hip pointer refers to a trochanteric. But his hip, he, he said he thought it was his hip pain. And the doctor said, if it doesn't go here, it's a hip pointer. I think he's referring to a trochanteric bursa, possibly. Yeah. So they gave, they gave him a couple of injections. It still hasn't healed too much. So I might get him to come and see you. Awesome, right. thank you. So anyway, so we're going to go for a short break right now. Doc, 60-second break, and we'll come back right with you quickly. Thanks, folks. We'll be right back. Getting older is not for sissies. That's what one of my patients says. And it's funny, but it's true. Live long enough and you'll get arthritis, skin cancer, probably one of the common chronic diseases like CHF, COPD, diabetes, at All County Healthcare, we teach you how to manage your disease. We make sure you know how to take your medications and how to recognize signs and symptoms before requiring hospitalization, no matter how many visits it takes. You didn't move to Florida to be sick. You moved here to enjoy the rest of your life. And that's exactly what our team of nurses, therapists, and aides at All County Healthcare help you do. Hi, my name is Deanna Barron. I'm an RN with All County Healthcare. I used to work for this huge corporate-owned home health agency, and I was always worried that they wouldn't let me make enough nursing visits to be sure that your wound was fully healed or that you were completely comfortable checking your husband's blood sugar level and giving him the correct dose of insulin or that your mom's lingering cough was the end of her bronchitis, not the beginning of a new episode. The owner of All County Healthcare always says, give the patient what they need, and he means it. At All County Healthcare, I see my patients until their goals are met, and I never worry. I hope you never need a nurse to come to your home, but if you do, tell your doctor, I want all county health care. All county health care. All county health care has exciting news for any and all patients with COPD or other respiratory ailments. Listen to what renowned pulmonologist Dr. Keith Robinson has to say. Hello, I'm Dr. Keith Robinson, board certified pulmonologist, medical director at Fusion Health Pulmonary Rehabilitation, and a board member with the American Lung Association of South Florida. We have exciting news for patients with COPD. We now offer IPV therapy at home, which has been demonstrated to improve airway clearance, decrease hospitalization, and improve quality of life of patients with COPD. Please call All County Healthcare for more information about this FDA approved therapy. For further information, call All County Healthcare now at 954 717 7027. 
That is 954-717-7027. Or visit our website at allcountyhealthcare.com. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Remember, All County Healthcare always puts the patient's needs first. And healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470 and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. Welcome back, folks. We're here with Dr. Sina Mezinoff. And Dr. Mezinoff is with the Boca Orthopedic Group, 660 Glades Road. I think that's right across the street from FAU, Doc. Sure. Right across sure. from FAU. They're at the Sandler Medical Plaza, Suite 460 in Boca Raton. And their phone number, you can reach doctor at any time. It is phone number 561-391-5515. That's 391-5515. They also have an office on Jog Road uh, in Boynton Beach. So if you're a Boynton Beach resident, you don't have to travel too far. He's at Jog Road. And for the Boca Raton and Delray people, he's in Boca Raton. That number again is, we want to give it again, 561-391-5515. Doc, I'm going to ask you a few questions about some of the, the, the procedures you do. Sure. And a lot of people don't know what these procedures are, so maybe you can help explain it to them. What's an epidural injection? Okay, so... Epidural injection is basically putting in medication close to the disc that is herniated or and painful, as well as blocking a nerve that is coming out of the spine that is that is inflamed. Um, a lot of people are very conf- they're not sure exactly what an injection you know they hear a cortisone injection they think all cortisone injections are the same. Um, the medication is the same. Most of the medication that we use is the same, but more importantly is where you put the medication. So some people come in with low back pain. Uh, they require a facet injection, not a epidural injection. A facet injection is slightly different than an epidural injection. The facet joints uh, are, you know, they run f- all throughout the spine, from all the way from the cervical spine, which just starts beneath your occiput and goes all the way down to your, uh, your sacrum. So each joint... Each vertebra is connected to the next vertebra through the facet joints. Uh, these facet joints do get very inflamed, usually in the geriatric population. They get a lot of arthritis. Um, and what happens is that patients always think that they have, they're having pain coming from a disc. In the geriatric population, a lot of the pain is coming from the facet joints. Facet. That's a facet joint injection you give. Yes. So the epidural is a facet. Then you have another thing called I don't know how to pronounce it, chiroplasty? We sp- the chiroplasty, we spoke about how you put cement into the fractured uh, vertebra. Okay, is that like, is, that's not similar to uh, when they give you the injection for your knees, uh, there's a series of three injections? Of five no, 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 that's it's okay. different. This is just putting, to stabilize the vertebra that's fractured, basically what we do is, um, it's a... Minimally invasive procedure. We don't even, a lot of the patients are not even, you know, we don't even use sedation for them. Uh, we put them on a bed, take a few x-rays, and with, a, with an x-ray guidance, we put the cement through the, uh, through the vertebral body and expand that, expand that um, compressed. Uh, well, why couldn't that be done for knees? I well, mean, it's maybe a crazy question, but I'm just asking. It sounds like... It could it be done for knees too? No, no, no. I can't. <laughs> it shows I'm not a doctor. So you just make it the doctor here. Now you got a spinal stimulator trials. Correct. So spinal stimulator trials are FDA approved for multiple things, uh, including post surgery, uh, laminectomy syndrome, and CRPS, which is also known as complex regional pain syndrome. This is a. It's been around for many years, but they have really it has really evolved over the past few years. There are multiple companies that have really high science behind uh, what they create. So basically what it does is it, I'm not an expert into the, you know, mil- on the molecular level, but from the way I was taught and understood this is that it blocks the pain going into your brain. So if you have low back pain that's been chronic, you haven't 
had any chance, you have tried the injections and don't have failed those, the stimulator is placed into the epidural space and it blocks the nerve, it, lo- it blocks the pain with different uh, electrical signals from going to your brain. Um, it's not like a TEMS unit. It's, I would say it's a TENS unit into your epidural space, but it's much more than that. Okay. It's much more, it's much, more scientific. much more scientific than that. And then you have per- peripheral joint injections. Correct. So peripheral joint injections are any you know, basic hip, knee, um, elbow, wrist, shoulder injections. That so are those are like, those are the, right, what they usually give you when a guy go in for knee, a knee injection, they call that a, uh, what's that uh, injection they give you in the knee? Steroid? Stero- no, what is it? It's the, uh, it's one shot they give you, huh? Cortisone, cortisone shot. Sure, it's like yes. a cortisone shot, sure. right? Okay. And the next one you got is radio frequency ablation, RFA. Sure. So radio frequency ablation is um, basically we desensitize the nerve endings that are causing the pain. So most often is done for um, neck and back pain that are caused for the by the facet joints. So if you have pain, you know you have arthritis in the neck, arthritis in the low back, coming from the facets. Firstly, we block the nerves that are coming from there. So it's just some lidocaine and steroids just to block the nerve. And if you get about a 50 to 60% relief, you're a good candidate for radio frequency ablation. It's almost the same procedure. It takes about, you know, five minutes extra. Um, we do, we do uh, all the procedures are done in our office. Um, and with about, you know, we desynthesize the nerve endings with heat. Uh, we don't use a blowtorch. Uh, it's just a cannula that has a electrical, and there's an electrical probe that is heated up to about 80 degrees centigrade, um, and it's used for about you know on for um, nine, 60 to 90 seconds. Patients have a great relief with that. It lasts about you know anywhere from you know a year to two, and it start, it's also being used right now to do um, knee pain. So with knee pain? Yes. Ooh. So it's also called. I'm gen- gonna come and see you. <laughs> So if you have gen- if so, there's also um, nerves that supply the innervation to the knee called the genicular nerves, and I have some patients who don't want to go for the knee replacements. That's me. And um, they failed the injections, the other types of injections, the synvisc, the visco supplementation, the corticosteroid injections, and then this is kind of last resort prior to going to a uh, knee replacement. Most of the time, it's used for um, osteoarthritis, not so much with, you know, tears of the meniscus. And not so much for meniscus, just arthritis. Most arthritis, yes. Okay. And then, for, you know, a lot of people heard about Botox. Yes. Right. They say, well, I got the Botox injection for the females. It's going to help my face, make me look prettier, happier. Right. But now you're using it. We've got to wrap it up. Yeah. That fast? Well, Doc... They're telling me I have to get off the year. We have to get off the year, but you were fantastic. Thanks. I'd love to have you back. Please come back. We have to get off the year. We got one minute. Folks, thanks again. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Please obey the science, obey, wear your mask, get your shot. Don't be afraid of it. I got mine. And the doc highly recommends everybody get their vaccination. Am I right, doc? Yes. Thanks again. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening and a wonderful, wonderful week. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Thank you for letting us share with you a longer and healthier lifestyle. If you have a doctor or are a doctor and wish to be on the show, call Amp2TV at 866-244-5422 and we will put you on the air as soon as possible. Tune in next week for more information on living longer and having a healthier life.